five minutes. For I thank the gentleman for yielding and for his leadership in this most important uh, area. Mr. Speaker, the heroin and opioid scourge is running this country into the ground. And unfortunately, the problem appears to be getting worse, not better. That grim reality is particularly true in my district in Cincinnati, where during a single week last summer, city health officials reported 174 overdose doses in one week. Deaths caused by opioids have doubled in my district, where during the first four months in 2017, the Hamilton County Coroner's Office had already logged in hundreds and hundreds of opioid overdoses. Heartbreaking numbers. But numbers only tell part of the story. The circumstances surrounding the spike in overdoses can and at times is horrifying. A couple of months back in Cincinnati, a nine-year-old girl called 911 about both her parents who overdosed on heroin in their SUV. She told the dispatcher she was scared and that her parents wouldn't wake up. The girl didn't know where she was or what was wrong with her parents, but she fortunately knew how to call 911. That call saved her parents' lives. But no little girl or little boy, for that matter, should ever be placed in that situation by their parents or by anyone. These types of stories are becoming all too common. Opioids don't discriminate based on age or race or socioeconomic class. Opioids can kill anyone in any neighborhood. Every day there are more headlines about how heroin and other opioids are basically taking over the country. The simple fact is that nearly every member of Congress could come to the floor today and share a similar story from their own district. And that's why, Mr. Speaker, it's imperative that we work together to find new and more successful ways to combat the opioid epidemic. We need to put politics aside and help people in need. Last year, we came together in a bipartisan manner to pass the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act, or CARA. And I think there's a good chance that the expended treatment and recovery options that legislation created will help some of those suffering from addiction to turn their lives around. While CARA will give local law enforcement and health care officials more resources to fight opioid addiction, we need additional legislation to help combat the importation into the United States of extremely dangerous synthetic drugs like fentanyl and cart fentanyl. Uh, which many have blamed for the spike of heroin overdoses. According to the DEA, much of the supply of these two dangerous drugs on our streets originates overseas, particularly from China and India. The bipartisan legislation that we led, uh, and it's being led by Representatives Tiberi and Senator Portman, are, they're proposing this. It's the Synthetics Trafficking and Overdose Prevention, or STOP Act. It would update the customs process to require that advanced electronic notice of all packages, large or small, be provided to customs officials. Providing this information to customs before the packages arrive will help them to help them, meaning the customs uh, agency, to intercept more illegal shipments and prevent these dangerous drugs from reaching drug traffickers within our borders. I'm hopeful that this legislation will be embraced with the bipartisan enthusiasm that we saw with CARA, because the heroin and opioid problem in this country is too serious too significant and too widespread for us not to work together at every level of government to find a solution to this epidemic. It's way overdue. We need to work together in a bipartisan manner about this. And I again want to thank the gentleman from Pennsylvania for his leadership uh, in this area.